Hi everybody, my name is Eva Gell. I am an entrepreneur CEO on a mission of making education both in STEM and entrepreneurship accessible to everyone for free. So in order to help me continue this mission and reach more people that need this, please hit the like button, share and subscribe to feed the algorithms deities. Now, let's move on. You're excited. You have a business idea and you know the business type that you want to follow and you have an idea of who your customers are and what they want. So now it's time to move to the next step, the most exciting step, a business plan. But wait, don't, don't you dare click away just yet because dun, dun, dun. you no longer need to basically create like a Bible of a business plan to get your company going. You can get your company going because there's been innovation in the world of business where we can condense this down into a single page document. So enough with the Jipri Japaning and let's get to it. Now, keep in mind that while we have this new innovation in the realm of business planning with business model canvas, there are other model types out there that are very useful, such as the lean canvas model, whom my mentor that I mentioned previously, Paul Siva, hey Paul, can tell you all about it. If you want me to expand on it, check him out or let us know below. So with that being said, Having a business plan condensed into a single page is so useful because it is a living and breathing document, which sounds kind of weird now that I said it out loud. It's alive! <laughs> Thank you. I'll be here every night. It continuously changes every day or even every week when you're starting out, which it should. It should adapt and continuously evolve in order to have an effective business execution plan. Mr. Arda, please cue the fantasy music. Editor? No, wrong one. Next one, please. Ah, there it is. Welcome to the realm of the business model canvas. This, my fellow entrepreneurs, emprendedores, rebels, and adventurers, is what a business plan looks like condensed into a single page. For that, what they may look like a lot, that realm is simple, compartmentalized into three simple districts, ruled over by the few laws that take Wait, care of that. Eva, could we just like get off of this and do like the, the content, like the, the, the educational, like the entrepreneur part? Let's do that. Too much? Uh, y yes. Fine. The business model canvas can be separated into three different sections. The customer slash market section, the distribution slash operation section, and the financial. Basically, the front, what happens in the back, and the finances. So, where do you start? It is better to start on the customer and market section since after all your business is based around this group of people and this section of the market. The means we're going to be looking at the realm of market. Starting out on the market section, we're going to begin with the value proposition. Now that you've spoken to your customers, you know your temps and some, you know your market, you can then go on and start putting into words the value proposition. Keep it in mind, value propositions are not a list of features, hence why the two fingers are up, take them as exclamation points, they're not a list of features, okay? But they are actually you're articulating what your customer values from your product that puts you ahead of your competition. Let's bring it back to the realm of the business model canvas. So let's assume, my dear adventurer, or mage, or knight, or whoever you want to be, that you came into this realm, you are trying to get to the king, the customer, because customer is king. Yes, you got it. Good job. A plus. Now that you're there, you want to get to them, so you need to bring to the king, the customer, the value propositions, what makes you the best knight, the best mage, the best adventurer out there. That's what your value propositions are. Now you're going to hop and skip over 
to the customer segments, or in this case, your king, because you need to know your king. So this is where the customer segment lies. For the customer segment, I did a prior video that I covered Tam, Sam, and Sum. And now that you know about your market and how the market is segmented, now you can go in and articulate in bullets, we don't need paragraphs, articulate the customer segments that you're going to target. Try to make it as small as possible and as specific as possible. You want to know your king. Moving on from customer segments, now that you know what makes you the best adventurer, you know your king, better proposition, customer segments, now you need to work on what connects them, the two bridges. First off, we look at the relationship. What sort of relationship you're gonna have with the king? So what sort of relationship you're gonna have with your customer? Is it going to be like a direct customer? Is it gonna be a partnership? You need to figure out what shape will this relationship have? Because then when you reach out to the customer, you know what to be seeking. And again, three bullet points, doesn't need to be too broad. But then once you do the customer relationship, it's the biggest thing. How are you gonna reach them? The channels. How are you gonna walk yourself there, drive yourself there and be able to reach them and send, hey, by the way, my value proposition, I'm pretty good, this is cool, over any other competition, please listen to me. So that's why you need to figure out what channels you're going to use or what pathways you're going to use. Whether it's social media, whether it's through print material, whether it is through conferences. There are many different ways of reaching out to the customers, the king, and be able to get that message out about your value proposition. Now that we've finished with the realm of market and customers, we can hop on over into the realm of operation. Now that you know enough about the king, you know about your value proposition, you know what relationship you want with them, and how you can reach them, you need to prove yourself. So here we have three sections, key activities, key resources, and key partners, all right? So starting with key partners, of course, to make a great successful business or adventure, you need a crew. You need to get together a team that is strong, but granted, these are not, I'm getting very sassy right now. The Puerto Rican is coming on me, what the? This is not where you're gonna list your team. These are called key partners. So with the key partners, you're going to focus on what partnerships and what key relationships is gonna make your business succeed. Could it be a partner for a hardware product when you're doing manufacturing, a partner in manufacturing that specializes in what you make? And when you can establish a partnership with them, then maybe costs are reduced or maybe they can give you an extra service that helps you get your business going. It could also be a partnership for distribution, getting your stuff out there or your service out there. Or if I want to go back into world of business craft, which is my happy place, I don't care what you say. Now that you have the key partners in the place, now you can go in and know what key activities are you going to need to do to make your business successful. The key activities will be what kind of quest and missions are you going to do, my friend, with your key partners and all your value propositions and your talents. For your key activities, they can be simple things such as research and development. You're gonna to need to do some manufacturing. You're also gonna need maybe do some certifications to get your product ready. Now that you know your key partners, your key activities, you can go into your key resources. So resources, are the things that you're going to need in order to make your business successful. Or in the world of the business craft, it will be what gear you're gonna use. Do you have the best sword? Do you have the best armor? Best magic stick? That's the word I use instead of staff, magic stick. But and when it comes to business, basically your key resources, if you're gonna do manufacturing, you're gonna need materials, you're gonna need molds. Also, you're gonna need to be able to have some testing done as well as connections and networking. It could be many different things, depends on what your business is. Dear adventurers, we have just finished going to the realm of the customer and the markets, and we just visited the realm of operations. Now it's time to go visit the realm of money. Or the more boring name is financials. Which is the section at the bottom of the business model canvas. Basically, you deal with two different sections cost structures, and revenue streams. 
what are basically the main sources that are gonna cost you money, such as R&D, is one of your key uh, activities. But guess what? You have to consider in your cost structure. It could be also how much the manufacturing is gonna cost, it could be marketing, it could be distribution, it could be so many different things. And if you can put quantifiable numbers in there, even the better. Or, are you ready? Let me go into the world of business craft. How much money your quests and gear are gonna cost you? Because you are a smart adventurer, very business savvy, good for you. But now that you know how much uh, you, you're gonna spend on your cost structure, then you can hop on over into revenue streams. It says it's in the name. From where are you gonna get your money? It does not need to come from one specific source. That's why they say it's important to have a diverse income. It's the same with the revenue stream. For example, take some of the stuff that I do, some of the income may come direct from the sale of the product, but some additional income may also come from the subscription for the program that is used on that hardware. So that's what you're gonna put in there. If you can be specific, the better. But important, very important, and very important, make it concise. That's the whole purpose of having a business model canvas in a single page. Keep it concise and easy to read. Nobody's got time to read what you want to put in 10 pages down in one page. It becomes too busy. Let me give you a real life example. Let's use SpaceX. On the value proposition, SpaceX, they can reduce the cost of launching a rocket by over 40%. I was specific, a bullet point, and I quantified it. They can also reduce the amount of space debris by having reusable rockets, which contributes to how they can reduce costs. For their customer segments, they target the government, specifically NASA, because they know that NASA spends over $100 million per launch, and they know they can make it for less. They also target other commercial companies that want to take things to space and they're making it far much more viable, such as communications company that are putting satellites for internet, uh, telephones, uh, mobile networks, and the such. But now that they know this, for when it comes to the customer relationships, as well as the channels, they can be partners as well as contributors into what SpaceX is developing. And when it comes to the channels, they normally reach out to them through conferences, then they just go direct to marketing through them or through references as they continue doing demonstrations at the capabilities of bringing Rocket back to the base of where they started. When it comes to key partners, they most likely target NASA to help continue developing this. Of course, they already have a lot of knowledge and they partner with other companies that were innovative in the space market to be able to bring new innovation that was gonna make things far much more affordable. When it comes to key resources and the key activities, they're gonna need to do a lot of launch testing, a lot of rocket building, a lot of manufacturing. And when it comes to the key resources, they're gonna need access to talented people with prior data. They're gonna need access to that facility for launching. And then also gonna need access to the government relations to be able to make space available commercially. And when it comes to the cost structure and revenues, on the last part, cost structure is the building of the rockets, the fueling of the rockets, and the operations of the rockets. And when it comes to the revenue, it comes from all the launches, as well as licensing opportunities of some of the innovations that they build, they can license it out to other companies to use. So, long story short, this is basically what it would look like. So now you can take all this knowledge and take it out and build your own business model canvas. Well, thank you for coming to visit the realm of Business Model Canvas. I'm your humble guide that was here to talk to you through the world of business craft. Thank you for visiting our realm as we continue on on our journey of building our own business, having independability, and making ourselves the best bosses out in the world. So go out there and chase your dreams and don't ever give up otherwise. It's real now. Be scared. Chancretazo. Until, until next one, everybody. That was somebody else's shoe. That wasn't mine. That was my shoe. Bye. Bye. <laughs>